Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Sometimes the idea of God is just so abstract. Sometimes we feel like no matter how many wonderful metaphors we can come up with for the creator of the cosmos and the one that Jesus called Abba, Daddy, no matter how many human attributes we project onto this divine source, we cannot seem to get any closer to God than we can to the farthest edges of the universe. The distance just feels so great. And I believe it is just this feeling of separation that causes so many of us to carry around a palpable sense of spiritual loneliness. And this is not just a modern problem. This, I believe, is the central spiritual problem in the human heart. If I cannot feel God, or see God, or hear God, is God there? And can God care about me? It's just this question that medieval theologians took on when they tried to develop natural proofs for God's existence. For them, the formulas of the Greek philosophers that had crept into our theology could only go so far. And their tendency to divide things into categories like matter and spirit only seemed to reinforce the distance. They pit our brains against our bodies, our souls against our skin. And I believe many of us modern theologians struggle with the very same thing. On a very visceral level, this duality just doesn't feel right. We believe that God is much more intimately entwined with our human experience, and that is especially true in this season. For isn't the idea of God out there and us down here just the opposite of what happens in this miracle of Christmas? Doesn't the incarnation mean that God showed up as one of us? Doesn't it erase those dividing lines of where God is and where God isn't? After all, if God can be born as a vulnerable refugee baby in a lonely stable on the outskirts of a backwater town in Palestine, you got to ask yourself, where won't God show up? This season, we celebrate a God who is not just an abstract notion, but one of us. More than us, of course, and thank God for that, but also one of us. We long for a God that we can wrap our arms around, and for a people who walk in darkness, for those of us who carry a persistent, low-grade fear of the dark in our hearts every day. And I think that's just about every one of us. This makes all the difference. I recently read a beautiful reflection on this kind of with us God by the Reverend Molly Basket. And Molly is the lead pastor of First Church in Somerville, Massachusetts, from which our beloved, uh, beloved Duhamel family came. She was their pastor. And Molly writes this. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who had trouble sleeping. Night after night, she'd wake her parents up and crawl into bed with them. They loved the feeling of their young daughter snuggling up with them, but nobody was getting a good night's sleep. Imagine a number of parents can relate to that. Finally, they put her to bed one evening with an admonishment that she needed to stay there for the whole night, and she started to cry. Panicked, they said, Sweetheart, you're never really alone. Don't you know that God is here with you, keeping you company? Yes, she said through her sobs. I know that God is here, but I just want someone with a little more skin on. And so we all long for the presence of a God with a little more skin on. It has been the cry of the human heart since our earliest days. And those of us who call ourselves Christian, that is who Jesus is, Emmanuel, God with us. God in a form we can understand, a person we can understand, a shape we can cling to, like a frightened child when the night is long and the fears crowd in. In the improbable symbol of the Christ child, God in her most fragile form, this season of Christmas welcomes the paradox of childhood and indeed of our human condition, the hopefulness and the fear that live side by side. 
the trust and the vulnerability that we carry around with us together, which feels particularly palpable this season. For this Sunday, as we prepare, as the children prepare to enlighten and entertain us with their Christian Christmas pageant, we are also mindful that this weekend is the anniversary of a very sad and frightening day in Newtown, Connecticut, just a year ago. This weekend, we remember the devastation of 20 childhoods and six adult lives that were lost in an ordinary school in an ordinary town not too far away from here. And we struggle to make sense of that horror in light of the comforting promises of a God called Emmanuel. It has been a year since that violent tragedy, a year of blame, of questions, of political posturing, a year where nothing has really changed. We continue to be a culture awash in guns, a fear-based society that searches for security by building a bigger arsenal than our neighbors. Last Sunday, I spoke of the deadening despair, that numbness that creeps in when we feel that we cannot heal the brokenness in our world. And that despair is real, and it can overtake us. Yet the invitation of Christmas is to move beyond that fear, to find the comforting embrace of God that interrupts the dark and scary night, the God that climbs under the covers with us when the world is frightening, the God who whispers to us, just as he did to Joseph, the words we all long to hear. Be not afraid. What fears keep you up in the night? What gives you trouble sleeping? <clears throat> what makes you want to crawl under the covers and wrap your arms around a presence that can make those fears go away? It doesn't matter how grown up we are, there are just some things in life that are so overwhelming to us that it makes us feel like vulnerable children in a big and scary world. This Advent season of growing darkness is a reminder of that kind of scariness, but it is also our season of hope that promises us we are never asked to hold our fears alone. That abstract God of the universe, the one that defies all our attempts to imagine him, has heard us crying in the night. She has put skin on and is holding us close. So be not afraid. Christmas is coming. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.